Hi friends, it's Terry Gaines. In this video tutorial, I'm going to share three cards created with the Earthen Textures Bundle. The stamp set and dies are bundled together for a 10% savings, and these are absolutely beautiful. The stamp set has some sentiments along with some images. Some of the images can be cut out with the dies, and there's some additional dies to just create some beautiful projects. This die up here will create an embossed image on your um, project. So there's so much versatility for these projects. I'm also going to be using the Earthen Elegance 12 by 12 Designer Series paper. If you are watching my video the month of June 2023, this Designer Series paper along with a select additional Designer Series paper is on sale this month. You can look in the text portion of this video to get more details. On the back side, there's some background papers. On the front side, there's just some fun decorative designs that are perfect for this bundle or any of your paper crafting projects. My inspiration for the three cards is a card sketch. My team, Stampin' Up! team name is Inking of You and we create card sketches for different team events. For this card sketch, we have a card base. Your card base can be eight and a half by five and a half, folded in half or scored, or you can cut it at four and a quarter by 11 and fold or score at the five and a half inch or right in half. So I'm going to use this for my card base. It has two layers that are three by five. I'm going to be using a piece of that designer series paper and some coordinating cardstock color in the copper clay color. And then I've already stamped my sentiment and I've got that layered on the copper clay paper also. Now, when you use card sketches, they're inspiration. You can add more layers. You can actually change the layers. Your decorative image can be any size or shape. So what I'm going to do is add another layer to be my decorative image on, on top of this designer series paper. So I'm going to stamp this image with some of the stamps in the stamp set. I'm going to use the copper clay ink pad, which is the coordinating color. And this ink pad is really new. And I wanna give you a tip when you're using brand new ink pads or you've just added new ink to your ink pads. Um, I wanna get a, just a little bit of ink on my stamped image. And I have ink on my fingers, so I just got it on here. I'm gonna turn this paper over. The beauty of the cardstock, you have two sides to stamp on. So I'm gonna turn this over, but back to what I wanted to share. I wanna move my ink so I get a um, less ink on my ink pad, and I'm going to use a plastic spoon. It's best to use something with no sharp edges, so I'm gonna just use the end of the plastic spoon, and I'm just going to move my ink. It will go right back in that location, and everything is fine. Now what I'm going to do is take my stamp and just tap, tap, tap onto here. I want my ink just on the surface. I don't want it to fill in on all the crevices of this image. So then I can place on my cardstock, put even pressure, give it enough time to absorb into the cardstock and get your stamped image. Now I stamped this face first. Now I'm going to add some this image on the inside. So I'm going to do a technique that's called masking. So I have some post-it notes sitting over here. I'm going to stamp this again on my post-it note. And now, and I put the sticky side up on this edge. So I'm just gonna move that out of the way. Now I'm going to take this post-it note, take a paper snips, and I am going to go on the edge. I need to go on the edge so I place this correctly, just a little bit cut off the right along the edge of this and I'm going to go down here too and I don't have to go down very far the reason I'm going on the sides is I want to make sure that when I cover up my already stamped image I'm lining it up on the right and left side also so now that I have that covered up I can take the same ink color tap on my image I just want it on the surface. You're gonna get the best image if you just stamp it on the surface, put even pressure, and then I'm going to stamp again and again and again without re-inking so I get different variations of that image. When I take that off, all of my, um, 
my stems are not shown, they're on this piece of paper. So that technique is called masking. It works great. Now I failed to mention that the first card I'm making, I'm just using stamps, paper, and ink. And also I mentioned that I'm going to layer it here. Now I actually do want to tell you that when you're layering and and putting your cardstock and sandwiching something in the middle, um, which is the designer series paper, you can maximize your paper by cutting something out of this. I'm actually going to take this vintage bottle punch and place it in here as far as it will reach and center it. Or actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to even get two of these out. I'm going to place it a little bit on the edge, put it all the way up, punch that out. I'm going to rotate it, do the same over here now I can use these for different projects. That's going to maximize my paper. Oh, I just did that wrong. You know what? I wasn't supposed to do it that way, but you know what? It still worked out. You can do that because I forgot I had to be careful for here. The other option you have is to use one of the dies and cut out your vase. But you know what? It still worked out. I can use either one of these, but because I pushed it in as where I did, I it worked perfect. Okay, my videos are unedited, and if I was in person, I would have these same little oopses, so um, bear with me, and um, so I thought I made a mistake, but all is good. So let's continue. So I'm using the silicone craft mat as I adhere my layers, and partly because I have this opening here, and I might have some exposed adhesive when I place this down over it. So now what I need to do is just make sure I cover up those um, openings. And now I can take this layer and I can place this onto my next layer. Now, this layer that I'm going to place it on next is slightly tilted. So I'm going to place this down on my, on my paper or I'm sorry, on my silicone craft mat. And then I'm going to slightly tilt that cardstock. And one of the things we could have also done is maximize this cardstock in the back by cutting something out. But I'll show you that on a future card. So I've got these layered. Now what I'm going to do is put my adhesive on the back of this, bring my card base in, and now I'm going to look for a straight edge, um, an even edge on the designer series paper layer to the edge of the paper here, similar to what this diagram is showing, and adhere this to my card front. Now we have the sentiment. I have stamped that already. I'm going to pop this up with some dimensionals. I have some dimensionals here off on the side. Let me just get that out of the way. And my take your pick tool. And because of the length of this one, I'm going to put three dimensionals. And then the take your pick tool works great to get those backings off. And the ribbon or the trim is always optional for your cards and I'm going to leave it off of this card sample. So this is the sample one with stamps, paper, and ink. So now I'm going to move on to sample number two. Move a couple things out of the way here. I don't have a lot of space in my video area, so I need to make sure I use it wisely. So the next sample, I'm going to use stamps, paper, and ink, but I'm gonna add punches. I'm gonna add the vintage punch and the bowel punch into this. So for the vintage punch, I'm going to use this piece of designer series paper and it's 12 by 12. I just have a sample piece here, or a smaller piece, and I'm gonna bring this punch in and I want to maximize my paper. So I'm going to go as close as I can to my previous image and then I'm going to punch this out. How cool is that to get all of that stamp decorative image or that decorative image already on your punch. So I'm going to use that for a decorative image. But for the bowel punch, I'm going to use the distressed gold 12 by 12 paper. You get two of these, they're 12 by 12 in size, 
in the gold foil sheets, also two, and they're 12 by 12 in size. When I cut out images with the bow punch, and just to know our punches lock, so you slide that over to unlock them. If you're ever having trouble getting at the punch, your lock might be over. That's just not letting you close it all the way. So make sure your lock is in the right position. So what I like to do is cut my foil papers at one and a half inch strips. Then, let me rephrase that. Any, any paper I'm cutting, just the one image. I don't want this image, so I'm not going to waste my, my specialty paper. So I've cut this at one and a half inch in height in size. And what I'm going to do is, um, I'm gonna put the white side so you can see it better. What, I, what I'm going to do is turn this on an angle because if I turn it on an angle and watch to make sure all of my images are going to be, let me rephrase that, all my cardstock is going to be cut out. I don't have an, a spot like that. That would mean I'm gonna not get the full image. Make sure that I'm getting all of that. I'm gonna punch that out. And then I'm going to, you can move this down and watch for the next one punch that out. If you use it this way, you can maximize your paper. So um, if you want to do that, one of those for both of these. So I'm going to use one out of the distressed paper and one out of the gold paper. So let's move that aside. For my layers, I'm going to use, um, for my card base, I'm using the Very Vanilla, just like my first card. And I already mentioned, um, this is adding punches. So we have stamps, paper, and ink, plus punches. So for my layers, I'm going to use the um, this print. And here's where I already punched out one of those vintage bottles. I'm going to punch out another one because these papers are so beautiful. You, you want to maximize those. So I'm going to punch this out. That can be for a future project. And this is going to be the back layer that we only see a little bit of it. So take advantage of that. If you own the dies, you can take and cut out both of the vases and use those for a future project. And then you can still put that on there and no one's going to even know that that is missing from that layer. So here, back to this card. And so I've got the bottle punched out. Those are all extra for future projects. And um, we got the card base. These are going to be our two layers. It doesn't matter which one of these we use. I'll use this one. And now I switch to the pecan pie color. And there are several colors that coordinate with that. And as I mentioned, your decorative or your layers can be any size, or you can have as many layers as you want. So I have cut down to two and three quarters by four and three quarters, a very vanilla layer that's going to be layered on top of here. What I'm going to do is, this is where our bottle is going to be attached. But what I also want to do is use a stamped image here. So I'm going to use pecan pie. Again, you want to move the ink. so. I have a new plastic spoon. You want to make sure that you clean them off before you switch to a different color. So I'm going to move that ink and I'm going to use this image for this one. And we're going to stamp this about right here. So I'm going to stamp that, give it time to absorb into the paper. So I just love that little added decoration is going to put behind our bow punch. Now what I'm going to do is attach the gold and the distressed gold onto that. So that stamped image will be a little bit of the background. I found there's multiple ways to put on these images. I found that I like to use the mini glue dot. So I just bring the mini glue, um, attach them with the mini glue dot on the bottom two leaves. So just bring the image to the mini glue dot, pick it up, 
and then I'm going to, they're so strong, I'm going to attach this one a little bit higher. And it's just attached by these two. This is all floating, but that just adds some depth to your project. Then I'm going to take the Distressed Gold one and put a mini glue dot on the bottom leaf on both sides. And you gotta be so careful. These mini glue dots are so strong, which is really, really good. But you wanna make sure you don't tear your paper. So now what I'm going to do is just keep these stems lined up and I'm going to move this a little bit to this side. One thing you do need to keep in mind is you want to make sure that the leaves um, don't go off the side of the bottle, meaning your opening's just right here. So you can't have a leaf down like that. And because I'm struggling with this bottom one. The beauty of this is you can just snip that off and then I can lower it a little bit and I'm going to have this offset a little bit like that. And do you know what I just did? You probably caught it. I just snipped off the leaf with the mini glue dot. So I'm going to just take and put the mini glue dot right here. Goodness. So um, I already told you my videos are unedited. And if I was sharing this in an in-person event, I would still have those same struggles. So now I have this. I want to add the bottle, but I want to raise this up with dimensionals. So what I'm going to do is take advantage of the side piece of my dimensionals. I'm going to cut off about three half sections here. I'm going to take my take your pick tool and add those right up to the top. I'm going to do three more here and three more here. These dimensionals are also very strong. So um, just this little bit I'm adding is going to be sufficient to adhere the image, but I also want to pop it up. Given its name dimensionals, it adds dimension to your project. So I'm utilizing those end sides of my dim dimensional sheet because they still have that same adhesive. All right. So one thing I want to do is I typically decorate my card after I assemble my layers. So I'm going to set that aside. Goodness, lots of bloopers in this video. So let's, let's get back to assembling this before we add our dimension to our card. So this card, we're going to layer like this and we're going to put our adhesive on the back of this layer now we've already maximized this designer series paper which is perfect and i think that's going to be the right side i'm going to just turn it a little bit to get a little bit of that color showing on all four sides turn it over we're going to attach this and now again, I'm going to watch for this straight edge and line that up to that side of my card base. Also look for spacing on the top and bottom to be equal there, or even I should say. Now I should have done that before I started adding these. Now I have the adhesive here. Now we want to add the bottle. And by cutting off that leaf on that, I can add my bottle like that. Now I've already stamped a little sentiment from the stamp set and I'm going to have this set right like this. Now it's going to go flush right here. So I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive right here, but because that bottle has a dimensional, I need a dimensional on this end of my sentiment. And I mentioned already these sentiments on a card sketch can be any length or size or maybe I failed to mention that, but you can make that any size. And now I'm going to have that adhere to that bottle and a dimensional there. I'm gonna add a little bit of embellishments to this. I have the card sketch shows a bow here, but I'm actually going to put a bow on the neck of the bottle just to add a little decoration there. This is the elegant um, goodness, what was this called? The Simply Elegant Trim in the Annual Catalog. 
And then I'm going to add these brushed metallic dots to the project. And I'm going to add a few of them in here. And I'm going to use the center color right here. And I'm just gonna add three of these. I'm gonna use the smallest ones and just add some added dimension to the card. So we'll just put them right there. And that is card number, oh goodness, look what I just did. Oh goodness, and you know how you solve those kind of problems? And you can take and sponge some color right here. Um, so I have to be careful where I'm getting that excess ink from. So um, bloopers all over this video. I am not going to restart it, nor am I going to edit it. We'll just keep going forward so I can share these projects with you. So this is sample number two with stamps, paper, inks, and with um, punches. So I do want to share with you here I have, I'm not going to do it now. I will add a video. I will add a photo of this card once I doctored this up because you have the option of taking all of this off and putting in a card, new card base, but I'm going to actually fix that. So I'll have that on my blog. There'll be a direct link in the text portion of this video to get to my blog. All right, before we go to the next card, I'm going to move all stamped images out of the way so I don't add ink to my next project. And then we are going to go on to a third sample that's using stamps, paper, inks, and those beautiful dies for the project. So for this card, I also am adding the Distressed Gold and the Gold Paper. My card base is um, very vanilla, so I'm going to go ahead and fold that and use my bone folder to crease that. We have a pecan pie layer, and I've maximized this already. I have cut out one of the vases with the dies, and I've cut this out. We are going to, I'm going to put very vanilla that is cut down to two and three quarters by four and three quarters. And I texturized this with the exposed brick 3D texture. And it gives a wonderful textured image on that project. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere these two together. Again, I've maximized that already by cutting these images out with my die cutting machine. So that's a great way to maximize your cardstock and use those images to decorate the card. And that's what I will be doing. So these two will be part of the decorations for the card. So I'm gonna watch for opposite corners and get those two layers adhered. Now the layer behind it is going to be the distressed gold paper and all we're going to see is a little bit in each corner. This is a specialty paper. It is a smart idea to maximize this and utilize this inside because it's going to be sandwiched into your card or onto your card. So what I want to do is utilize it for decorating this image. So we have this little die here that we can add a decorative image here and then you have a die that will create a little top to that so I want to use the distressed gold to do that it is best to use adhesive sheets behind these images before you cut them out so I took a piece of the adhesive sheets you get 12 in a package they're 6 by 12 in size you open it up and you take your sheet and you cut it to the size you want. I believe this is two and a half inches by two and a half inches. And I'm going to put this on the back side of my distressed gold paper. And when you cut it out, you're going to find the edge that you peel the backing off of. And I'm only going to peel off a section at a time. I'm going to just, when I say that, I kind of put that one down and then I grab this one. So peel off that and adhere it to the back of your paper. Then you can take and cut these out. But that's only gonna cut out a portion of that. So I'm gonna actually also cut this image out. So I'm going to take this to my die cutting machine and cut these three images out. 
Now, I only put the adhesive sheet on this bottom portion because I don't want the adhesive sheet behind this image. So let me grab my piece that has those images already cut out. So I've got that image cut out, we've got this, and we've got this. So that's going to help decorate the card. Now what we can do is take this, put this in the back, and no one's going to know that we have utilized that paper and um, got all of our decorative images from it. So let's go ahead and get all of these layers adhered. Because of all of these openings, it is wise to work with the silicone craft mat, as I mentioned earlier. So now I'm going to just place this to expose a little bit of those edges and add adhesive. Now we can peel this backing off. We've got adhesive right here. I'm gonna peel that off, make use of that. That's gonna make a nice strong image there. So with that adhesive sheet, you peel off only one side, you put it on this side. Once you cut it out, you'll peel that backing off to get that exposed adhesive. So um, now I'm going to take this and place this and look for a spacing there. So now we have this part decorated. The sentiment, I've stamped that ahead of time and I use the stylish shaped dies. I use the smaller die right here. So I've got that cut out. And so that's going to be our sentiment. We are going to utilize this and this and this, as I mentioned. We are going to utilize this and this and then I also have a few other things. I've cut out this other vase, the taller vase, with this designer series paper. We're going to add that to the project and then I also cut out of gold foil sheet this one. So we're going to add that to the project. So let's get these pieces ready. So we need to attach these pieces onto this face. The beauty of this image is you can add that to um, create a face that's taller or shorter than the two dies that we have. I'm going to attach it so it's even to the top of this. So to do that, I'm going to I'm going to do that last though. Let's put this piece on first. This is our decorative piece. Now, I do have a sample that I created already of this card, and when I created that sample, I put this onto my cardstock before I cut the vase out. Um, I think you can do it either way. For this sample, I'm going to take this vase, and then I'm going to attach it now. And then because it goes over the edges like so, you want to take your paper snips, and I did have one over here. Take your paper snips, and I like to turn them over. If you take this top blade and rest it against your cardstock, it becomes the guide to getting that to cut out nice. And then turn it over and just, when you turn it over upside down, now you have to remember to um, take those off. And there we have that decorative piece. Now what I want to do with this piece and this piece, and these are just added details that I think make a little bit of a difference for your project. I'm going to add some shading to them. Because all of this product that I'm using, including the paper, just has that distressed look, I'm going to take my pecan pie ink, a blending brush, and I'm just going to add some color to give this some depth to it. So I'm just going to add that. And this is what I'm going to do to the edge of that card too, the one that I got the blooper on. So you can add as much color as you want. I'm going to darken that up a little bit, just add some texture to that. And then I want to add some color to this one too. So I'm just going to take the blending brush and just add some depth by darkening the designer series paper with the, the pecan pie ink. 
All right, so now we are ready to assemble our card. Make sure I have no ink on my fingers. I don't want to ruin this card. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this image on first. Now, if you remember, we had adhesive sheet. So there's a little bit of adhesive sheet just on the very back of the, or the bottom of the stem. I added a mini dimensional already to this. And what I'm going to do is put this image on first because this is going to be in the larger vase. So I'm going to add it like so, and that's adhered now with a mini dimensional. And then I'm going to put the face on next. So for this face, we're going to place this about right here and just have that one image coming out of that face. Now this face is going to be next to this raised up with dimensionals. Now I want to attach this. So we're back to this part that I started and then sidetracked. Peel the backing off. Now this entire image has adhesive on. Now I want this to go um, on the top. I'm making this face taller than the die. I actually created it. So I have that just adhered to a little bit of this. Now I'm going to take my dimensionals and put a dimensional to um, right at the seam to attach both of those images. And then I'm going to put one down here and then I'm going to put a couple more right here. Okay, now before I take that backings off, I'm just gonna set it here. I'm going to put this face right here. This image and this image are going to be in the, I'm um, coming out of the vase. I'm gonna put this one on the bottom and this one on the top. So now what I'm going to do to attach these, I'm going to take my adhesive and just put some adhesive right here. The face is going to cover that up and I wanna make sure that I offset these a little bit. So I'm going to put those down now I can take the backings off my vase. And these cards with the dies and you add all of these extra details take extra time, but I really think they add so much more detail to your project. And these cards are the ones that you're going to create and make for your special friends. So now what I'm going to do is just make sure that this is down like this. And then the sentiment is going to be tucked here. Because it's gonna be tucked underneath here, I'm going to snip this portion off and I'm going to attach this right under here. And I'll attach it with a couple dimensionals. And here we have this. And now I'm going to tuck this right here and that's our sentiment and i am going to add a bow right where the card sketch has it right down here and then i'm going to add some of these or one of these right here and this will be the third card using stamps paper ink and the dies and the embossing folders. So I hope you enjoyed these projects created with the earthen um, textured bundle and with the designer series paper and inspiration being the card sketch. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. If you found me via YouTube, look in the text portion of this video to find a direct link to my blog post where I will have a free PDF that you can download which will have all of the details for the supplies and the card sketch and photos. And if you love free PDFs, um, I would love to have you subscribe, like, or comment on my YouTube channel. And I want to thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoy creating this project. Take care and happy creating.